Welcome to another episode of Ripple Stories, where fairy tales are reimagined with representation. Did you know, children, that some people prefer not to be referred to as he or she, but they instead? This story has a character who is they or them, meaning they want to be respected for who they are and not with being a girl or a boy. As some of you know, I choose to be called Teacher Nicole instead of Miss Nicole when I am teaching my kindergartners. Teacher, doctor, judge, police officer, and they or them are gender neutral terms instead of Miss or Ms or Mrs or Mr, or even she or he. I like being called teacher as it is a sign of respect for me as a person and is the same term used for both men and women. So now, without further ado, let's hear the story of Jorinda and Jorindel, a Grimm's fairy tale reimagined. There was once an old castle that stood in the middle of a deep, gloomy wood, and in the castle lived an old fairy. Now this fairy could take any shape she pleased. All the day long she flew about in the form of an owl, or crept about the country like a cat. But at night, she always became an old woman again. When any young person came within a hundred paces of her castle, they became quite fixed and could not move a step till she came and set them free, which she would not do till they had given her their word never to come there again. Sometimes, when a maiden came within that space, she was changed into a bird, and the fairy put her into a cage and hung her up in a chamber in the castle. There were seven hundred of these cages hanging in the castle, and all with beautiful birds in them, birds of every color and every kind, just like the young maidens they had been before. Now, there was once a girl whose name was Jorinda. She was smarter and funnier than all the pretty girls that ever were seen before. And a shepherd, whose name was Jorindel, was very fond of her, and they were always to be found in the other's company. Jorinda had springy black hair that framed her soft, round face and eyes that crinkled at the corners when she laughed. Jorindel had brown hair that hung almost down to their green eyes, a shy, quiet demeanor, and long, lanky limbs. One day, they went to walk in the wood, that they might be alone, and Jorindel said, We must take care that we don't go too near to the fairy's castle. It was a beautiful evening. The last rays of the setting sun shone bright through the long stems of the trees upon the green underwood beneath, and the turtle doves sang from the tall birches. Jorinda sat down to gaze upon the sun. Jorindel sat by her side, and both felt sad. They knew not why, but it seemed as if they were to be parted from one another forever. They had wandered a long way, and when they looked to see which way they should go home, they found themselves at a loss to know what path to take. The sun was setting fast, and already half of its circle had sunk behind the hill. Jorindel on a sudden looked behind them, and saw through the bushes that they had, without knowing it, sat down close under the old walls of the castle. Then they shrank for fear, turned pale and trembled. Jorinda was just singing. The ring dove sang from the willow spray. Well a day, well a day. They mourned for the fate of their darling mate. Well a day. When her song stopped suddenly, Jorindel turned to see the reason, 
and beheld Jorinda changed into a nightingale, so that her song ended with a mournful jug, jug. An owl with fiery eyes flew three times round them, and three times screamed, To woo! To woo! To woo! Jorindel could not move. They stood fixed as a stone, and could neither weep, nor speak, nor stir hand or foot. And now the sun went quite down. The gloomy night came. The owl flew into a bush. And a moment after, the old fairy came forth, pale and meager, with staring eyes and a nose and chin that almost met one another. She mumbled something to herself, seized the nightingale, and went away with it in her hand. Poor Jorindel saw the nightingale was gone. But what could they do? They could not speak. They could not move from the spot where they stood. At last, the fairy came back and sang with a hoarse voice, Till the prisoner is fast and her doom is cast, there stay, oh stay. When the charm is around her and the spell has bound her, hie away, away. On a sudden, Jorindel found themselves free. Then they fell on their knees before the fairy and prayed her to give them back their dear Jorinda. But she laughed at them and said they should never see her again. Then she went her way. They prayed, they wept, they sorrowed, but all in vain. Alas, they said, what will become of me? They could not go back to their own home, so they went to a strange village and employed themselves in keeping sheep. Many a time did they walk round and round, as near to the hated castle as they dared go, but all in vain. They heard or saw nothing of Jorinda. At last they dreamt one night that they found a beautiful purple flower, and that in the middle of it lay a costly pearl. And they dreamt that they plucked the flower and went with it in their hand into the castle and that everything they touched with it was disenchanted, and that there they found Jorinda again. In the morning when they awoke, they began to search over hill and dale for this pretty flower, and eight long days they sought for it in vain. But on the ninth day, early in the morning, they found the beautiful purple flower, and in the middle of it was a large dewdrop, as big as a costly pearl. Then they plucked the flower and set out and traveled day and night till they came again to the castle. They walked nearer than a hundred paces to it, and yet they did not become fixed as before, but found that they could go quite close up to the door. Jorindel was very glad indeed to see this. Then they touched the door with the flower and it sprang open so that they went in through the court and listened when they heard so many birds singing. At last they came to the chamber where the fairy sat with the 700 birds singing in the 700 cages. When she saw Jorindel, she was very angry and screamed with rage, but she could not come within two yards of them, for the flower they held in their hand was a safeguard. They looked around at the birds, but alas, there were many, many nightingales. And how then should they find out which was their Jorinda? While they were pondering what to do, they saw the fairy had taken down one of the cages and was making her way off through the door. They ran after her and quickly touched the cage with the flower. Suddenly, Jorinda stood before them and threw her arms round their neck, looking as beautiful as ever, as beautiful as when they walked together in the wood. 
Her dark hair framed her face as she wept with joy. Then they touched all the other birds with the flower so that they all took their old forms again. They took Jorinda home where they lived happily together many years. And the other maidens who had been forced to sing in the old fairies' cages much longer than they liked, returned to their homes and were welcomed by their families with rejoicing. Snip, snap, snout, now my tale's told out. Join me next week for another story of magic and wonder. All stories told by Ripple Stories are retold from copyright-free and public domain.